What is going on everyone? Welcome to another very, very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. I am so excited about today's episode because I'm going to be showing you all how to set up a worm bin. Now we did do a video on our three worm bins that we've had for the past five years. I showed you how easy it was to do it about five years ago, so I figured I'd do a redo video with better quality, better speaking skills, and you know, a lot of learning experiences that I've learned along the way about how to keep these worms happy and healthy. So I figured I'd make that all in today's video. Hopefully you guys are going to enjoy. And uh, so let's jump right on into it. The first things you're going to need are some pretty basic materials. This is a $5 worm bin. I got these, actually they were broken. They were at uh, Walmart. They were broken and they were on clearance. A lot of times during uh, you know, back to school season or you know, just uh, after graduation when people are moving things out, things like uh, that are kind of happening with school time, you typically see these totes on sale. Uh, you can usually get them for about 10 bucks, but what's really great is look, sometimes they get broken and instead of throwing them out or you can ask the manager if they have any that are broken, they'll usually cut you a deal these were actually in the clearance section for 75% off. So they were normally 10 bucks, they were normally uh, 980, I think they were, but they were 75% off because the corner, the corners were, were chipped and cracked, as you can see. Not a huge deal at all. We're literally gonna be putting worms in them, so it's not that big of a deal. But uh, you know, that, they obviously can't sell it at full price. And that's a benefit to us because it's cheap. I mean, it's super, super cheap. And this right here will hold, uh, this right here will hold I think it's like 15 gallons, something like that. The next thing you're going to need is some worm food. This is very, very important. This right here is just scraps from our juicer. It's really nice, really well broken down uh, food pulp that we run through our juicer. If you don't have a juicer, what you can do is just take some food waste, banana peels, orange peels, doesn't matter. Anything that's not meat, dairy, or fatty, or salty, those four things should never go in your worm bins or your compost. As long as it's not those things, you can throw it inside of a blender, blend it up with just a little bit of water so it's, so it's kind of like a slurry or a, a smoothie-like consistency, and that's great. You just want to break down the particle size so that it's smaller because worms have small mouths, and they'll be able to break down the food a lot faster. Um, we need our, we're going to need some worms. <laughs> we got these from Uncle Jim's Worm Farm. I'll post a link. Uh, it doesn't, we don't get, uh, you know, we're not being sponsored by Uncle Jim's Worm Farm, but we will get a little kickback if you buy through our link. So I'd appreciate it if you did help support the show. And um, that's where we get ours. They've been really great quality. Again, we started all these worms with Uncle Jim's Worm Farm worms five years ago, and uh, they're just doing awesome. Um, but we start with every bin, we always start with 500 worms. Um, you can start with more, but they reproduce so quickly and they do so well in these bins that, you know, I don't typically say spend a lot of money on your worms because by the end of three to five months, you'll have so many worms in here that you'll have to divide it up. And that's actually how we got these other two bins. We started with just one bin and 500 worms. And after the course of one year, we had so many worms that we actually had to divide them out and that's how we got two more bins. Once they get so many worms, they kind of hit a, a, a critical population size and they really don't reproduce that fast and they don't uh, reproduce that often because there's just not enough space for them all and there's not enough food for them. So they kind of regulate that way. And you'll find that once they, once they get to max capacity, they may, there might be 1,000 to 1,500 worms in a bin and that's about as many as you'll have at, at max capacity. Um, so that's, that's the worms. Oh, and by the way, we're using red wigglers. Red wigglers are very important. I've had a lot of questions saying, you know, can I use worms from my yard? Can I use night crawlers? Can I use like fishing bait worms? And you can, but they don't work nearly as well. The really nice benefit to red wigglers is they're known as communal composters. Communal composters, basically, they will, they will feed on one source of food and just annihilate that whole source of food until they move on. Um, and so it looks kind of crazy in the soil, but that actually helps us to produce worm castings much quicker. And also, they're not territorial. So worm ca or, uh, you know, night crawlers are very territorial. They need a certain amount of space, and they don't really love to come in contact really super close with each other. Whereas, as you'll see with the red wigglers, they're just a giant ball of worms. They love that, and that's just how they, that's how they uh, live. So it's nice to have those in your worm bin. 
because you're gonna have just better success overall. The other thing you're going to need is a bottom. This is the bottom to uh, just an old tote. Usually fits on top. However, this fits on bottom because what we're going to do is we're gonna drill drainage holes in the bottom here so that the worms don't drown and any of their leachate or like basically uh, worm urine, it will all go out through the bottom holes and not build up in the bin because it needs somewhere to go. And this will just catch that. So if you're doing it indoors like it, we are in our uh, basement, it's not gonna run all over the floor. And really nice benefit is about once every two or three months, we'll actually catch that leachate that comes out when we flush our bins out. We'll, uh, we'll flush the bins out with, uh, with a little bit of water and that leachate comes, drains into the, into the bins here or into the, the tray. And then we'll use that to feed our garden. And it's so incredibly nutrient rich. And it's just an incredible source of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, as well as uh, beneficial bacteria and fungi for your garden. It's truly incredible stuff. And that's what we use all the time. And it's awesome, awesome stuff. So uh, that really helps to catch that. And that just sits on there like that. Now, the, le uh, the very last thing you're going to need is some starter. Now you can, do what you can use whatever starter you want. There's just some things I found work better than others. The best thing, if you have it, is some semi some semi-finished compost. This is five gallons of just compost. <laughs> it's really, really nothing special to it. It's just grass clippings, uh, mulched up leaves, some food scraps, twigs, what have you. It's just whatever would break down from our compost pile. This is really great because it's pH balanced. It also has a great starter that's going to just help the worms feel more like home uh, because sometimes depending on what you use, they can feel a little bit out of their element and they can get really stressed and start to kind of do a mass exodus. We did a video about three years ago where I harvested worm castings and I changed their bin out. I changed it out to some potting mix that I had left on hand and it was primarily sphagnum peat moss based. Peat moss is really acidic and they don't like acidic soil. So what happened is they didn't like that acidic soil and they just all left and they just started crawling up the sides of the walls and it looked just so incredibly disgusting yet kind of crazy all in the same. And it was because this, the environment was too acidic. So I go always if I can with a, just a partially finished compost. You can also go with just some native soil outside or what's really great is if you have it on hand as well, use some shredded up, uh, some shredded up newspaper but don't, and I repeat, don't use just shredded newspaper. It just dries out too fast and there's not enough, um, you know, there's not enough porosity, I guess. There's not enough water holding capabilities in that newspaper to really keep it nice and damp to keep the worms happy. The best thing, like I said, is just this partially finished compost because it's gonna stay really damp, but not too damp to where the worms don't feel comfortable. Um, Worms like an, a damp environment. They breathe through their skin. They don't have, uh, you know, they don't have lungs like you and I do. They breathe through their skin. And if they, have, if they don't have moisture in their environment, they can't breathe. And that's why worms are kind of slimy when you pick them up. Um, and it's very, very, very important to have that soil moisture. So that's all you're really going to need. Oh, and also a drill just with a, a regular drill bit. Doesn't really matter the diameter, just to drill some holes for drainage. This one I think is like three eighths inch or something like that, but I don't even really know. It was just already in there. And that's, that's how little I care about the diameter of the drill bit. You just need some drainage holes so that, uh, so that all the, the excess moisture can drain out the bottom. So the first thing you're gonna do is just drill your holes. Real simple. People always ask me how many holes. I have no clue. I just go until I feel like it's enough holes. <laughs> And people also ask me if the worms ever leave the holes. They don't typically because once they leave, they realize there's no moisture or soil and they don't like being exposed to air. So they go back into the soil. They really don't leave that often. You got yourself your drainage holes. And then what you wanna do is you wanna drill some holes along the side for some air. It's very important to get airflow in here because once you have a lid on, there's not gonna be very good airflow and you can get things like mold and mildews that can build up if you don't have some, some decent airflow. So there you go, you got the holes in the bottom the holes on the side, and that's about all you need. Then we're going to simply take the, take the top part, put it on the drainage portion. Then we're going to simply take our semi-finished compost. Now that we've got all of the, the worm bedding material in here, 
we need to just make a trench to put their food. We always get asked, how much food should I feed my worms? It's really based on how many worms you have. In a starting bin that starts with about 500 worms, I give them roughly three quarters of a pound of food. If they're a fully established worm bin, they can handle about a pound to a pound and a half of food per week. You don't wanna give them too much food because what can happen is if they don't eat it all, that's a recipe for fungus gnats, molds, and mildews. You want them to be consuming all the food within one week. And so that was, that was their food. And we're gonna simply cover that up. It helps if you cover it up to reduce that mold and mildew because if, if it's buried, there's much less of a chance of that, that happening. And then the final thing is just we're gonna add our worms. Usually once you dump these worms out here, they're going to be a little bit dry because they ship them without a whole lot of water weight in their soil. You'll find that as they begin to rehydrate in the soil, they become much more, much more spry. They're still very full of life right now. You'll see here, they're still very full of life, but they're not, uh, they're not as full of life as they will be. And that's because they're bedding that they ship them in from Uncle Jim's Worm Farm tends to be a little on the drier side. And I get it, when you ship, when you ship uh, wet soil, that's basically water weight that you're paying for. So they tend to, set, uh, they tend to ship it kind of dry, but they ship it real quick and the worms always recover. I've never had, I have absolutely never had a problem. All right, and the very final thing you have to do is just drill some holes in your top cover here. Once you've got your holes drilled, you're good to go. Just slap it on and you are worm composting. It's really that simple. Now I know that vermicomposting is not the most socially accepted thing yet. I get it. But sometime down the road, we're definitely going to, as a society, look back and regret throwing so many food scraps into the landfill. You know, I just read that the average household throws out on average 2,000 pounds of food scraps per year. That's per year. That means if we technically threw out 2,000 pounds of food scraps, these worm bins here will have saved us almost 10,000 pounds of food scraps from going to the landfill and instead turned that into nutrient dense, beautiful worm compost for our garden. That's not only fertilizer, but it's also reducing waste at the landfill. So I really hope that you guys will reconsider your disgust for worm composting, or if you are interested in worm composting, let me know in the comments box below. I know a lot of times we get the question, Luke, doesn't your wife absolutely hate the fact that you have worms in her basement? Isn't that weird? Isn't that awkward when guests come over? And the answer is no, not really. Most people know us and know what we do. And if they're true friends, they accept you for what you do. And if not, it actually starts a conversation that will sometimes actually turn them into worm composters themselves. It's really funny. We have a friend that came over the other day for dinner. And after he saw what we were doing down here in our, in our grow room, he asked what these were. Him and his wife actually went out, they bought worms, they bought a worm tower, they didn't create this inexpensive setup like I wish they would, but they were a little new to the idea and they wanted to just have something set up, I get it. But that's not the point. They actually started worm composting and so I'm really happy for them to make that decision. It was really cool and now they're sending me pictures of their worm bins and they've got a little container garden that they're gonna be using their worm, comp their, uh, worm castings on their uh, container garden. So it's a total win. And so, yeah, I, I get it. You know, it definitely can seem a little strange, but Mrs. and my gardener loves it. And she actually enjoys bringing the, the uh, food scraps down here and feeding them as well. So it's not even just me getting involved in it. And not only that, but the really great thing is for a, an education source for Geneva. You know, we bring her down here so that she can feed the worms and she actually enjoys it. She loves feeding the worms. And it's such a great experience for a kid to grow up knowing the full cycle of food, not only from how you grow it and eat it, but also what happens to the waste that then gets broken down, turned back into food for the plants to reconsume to make more food for you. It's that total life cycle that really helps you gain a lot of respect for the food that you eat. And it also really helps to, uh, to help a kid to understand where their food is coming from and just how much work goes into what they eat. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. And as always, this is Luke from the MI Gardener channel reminding you to grow big or go home. I'll catch you all later. See ya. Bye. You worms are going to be famous.